Well, joining us now is Warren East. He's the chief executive of Rolls-Royce. Mr. East, thank you for joining us. I know it's a particularly difficult day because uh, we're looking at the future of the airline industry, and you said in a conference call that the airline must protect future jobs by acting now. What will exactly be the legacy of the virus on Rolls-Royce? Um, thank you. Good morning. Well, you're, you're right. It is a very difficult day. Um, uh, Coming into this crisis, uh, civil aerospace represented about 50% of our business in, in revenue terms. This is um, quite, uh, uh, quite a blow for our um, civil aerospace business. Consensus in the industry is that it's going to take several years uh, for demand to return to the sorts of levels that we saw uh, in 2019. And over the, the three to five year period, um, we're expecting um, a decrease in demand of approximately a third. Uh, and so what we're doing with the announcement today is bringing our capacity in line with that expected medium term demand. Um, Mr. East, I know you're also considering closing sites. When will you make a decision? Does this decision, you know, need to be taken earlier rather than later? Yeah, it needs to be taken uh, as soon as possible. Um, we have to consult with employee representatives and with unions, and that does take some time. Um, but, you know, we're very sensitive to the fact that, you know, it's a, it's a terrible prospect if you're told that, um, you might not have a job, and we want to remove that uncertainty for employees uh, just as soon as we possibly can. Uh, so what, in the next couple of months, or will it take longer to, to make a decision on um, I, I think I think we're not talking weeks, we're talking months, but not many months. I mean, the the, the number one answer here is as soon as we possibly can. Um, you know, this is, this is something uh, which is, you know, it, it's a very uh, serious impact for our business, um, but we need to take this action now. We need to protect uh, the future of um, the employees that we will have in, in the future, uh, and that means protecting our business. That means getting capacity and demand in line, uh, and the uncertainty is, is, a, is a consequence of that. We want to, we want to minimize it. What kind of plants or site closings are you looking at? Is it manufacturing? Is it service sites? Is it mm. both? And would it be in the UK or overseas? Yeah, well, it's um, the the answer is all of the above. Um, you know, this is this is a general reduction in the level of demand, both for our new engines and for uh, servicing um, of existing engines, uh, and that means that we will need to manufacture fewer parts either for new engines or to, to use to service existing engines. Uh, so, so very much it's a reduction of uh, manufacturing capacity, uh, but it's also a commensurate reduction in, uh, in office staff that required to support that activity. Do you think the aviation industry will ever get back to what it was, let's say, December 2019? And how long would that take? Uh, well, well, the answer is yes. Um, I, I can't tell you exactly how long it's going to take, as I say, you know, consensus is uh, is of the order of three to five years. Um, I, I think, you know, importantly, though, with with a shock like this to a sector like civil aerospace, we we probably are going to see some changes in um, in in how things are done. And you know, I think if anything, we're going to see an acceleration towards more sustainable air travel. Uh, and, um, you know, that, as far as a business is, like ours is concerned, that's a good uh, opportunity. And we want to position our business um, to, uh, to service that opportunity if we possibly can. Um, what, what will be the longer lasting concerns of the next 12 months? I know, again, how many more job losses can we see with these plant closures? It'll be difficult. When do you then expect to pick up, even if it's not going back to the normals, you know, pre-COVID-19? Yeah, so, um, so there are two distinct phases. There's the trough 
and uh, and when do we expect that to pick up? And um, you know the on and 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 that is about about surviving right now. Uh, and we believe that that you know we can get through this period of immediate disruption where you know air travel right now. I mean, in 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 April, um, our flying hours were down something like ninety percent. So. What we're doing this morning is not solving for that trough. What we're doing this morning won't be affected whatsoever by um, you know, how long it takes to, uh, to, to start recovering. Um, however, when it does recover, this is all about what levels do we expect it to recover to. And we expect it to recover by, say, the end of 21, um, back to levels that are about a third less than we saw in in 2019 and then we expect over the following years uh growth to resume so that we get back to those 2019 levels over over several years and as i say that could be could be five years uh so that, that that's the sort of picture that that we're having to play into um warren east how, how soon do you hope to reach an agreement with the unions on the job cuts as soon as possible. As soon as possible in the next seven days, or as soon as possible, you think it, it, it'll take months? What kind of time frame are we looking at? Yeah, I mean, I mean, t typically these things uh, take um, take a small number of months. Um, I mean, the, when you, you look know, at the government, yeah, that we're quite well aligned with uh, with our union colleagues and employee representatives here. We have a shared objective of protecting as many jobs as we possibly can. Uh, and that means, you know, we need to get the, the business working so that we can protect those jobs. Uh, I think everybody um, in, who's involved understands that. Um, but we have to go through the proper period of consultation with employee representatives and, uh, and, and unions before we can actually get granular detail and agreement.